We talk Valley Cats baseball here on Big Board Sports 104.5 a team. ESPN Radio, they are back on the road after the camp day game yesterday against Connecticut. It produced a whole bunch of enthusiastic young kids, which that's fine. They're right, kids in, in uh, baseball, it's it's all good. Now the road trip uh, to Lowell, and the manager is Morgan Ensberg, a former Houston Astro, former New York Yankee, and joins us uh, once a week, every week here on Big Board Sports. Morgan, Roger Wyland, good morning. Hey guys, how you doing? We we are good, and I I can tell you're, you're you're back on the road again. Yeah, I just got to the hotel, so we're actually walking down the hallway. We could do FaceTime, and you could see the exciting life of minor league baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me. Uh, let, let's just uh, open this one up first. What where what is the state of the Valley Cats team on the field right now? Are you happy with where you're at? What g- give me give me the nuts and bolts of the Cats at the moment. Um, I mean, no, we're not happy with obviously like the outcomes of what's going on. We're we're on the the losing end of these games, but when we look at at some of the things we've been working on, things like home runs, things like strikeouts, we lead the league in strikeouts as our you know with our pitching staff, and we lead the league in home runs, and so this is all kind of part of the process. And I know that I keep on saying that, but we're seeing a lot of positive uh, results individually, uh, but we're just not seeing them as a team yet. But I expect that to change shortly. Well, I, you know, we, we did call up some stats here, and, and Cats pitchers uh, lead the New York Penn League in strikeouts, 286 uh, in 238 and a third innings. And the pitching staff, your pitching staff, Morgan, has allowed the fourth fewest runs in the league. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is you know, one of these kind of kind of conundrums in that we're not letting in runs, and then the other part is that we're hitting the ball. Uh, we're third in the league in hard hit balls, and yet those balls right now are going to defenders. So it's a very strange thing, and actually, it's something that I've never experienced before. So I'm in uh, uncharted uh, territory myself. Well, still a ways to go here for the Valley Cats, but a little road trip coming up, and then back to the Joe, where the attendance has been phenomenal, and it was it was great to see the young kids. I I, I got to tell you this, Morgan. We just had a discussion about Little League Baseball, and as you know, I coach my son, 10-year-old Little League team. We're in the, we're in the New York State Tournament out in Gilderland next week. Really proud of our guys. I mean, sorry about it. We're in the New York State Tournament. I mean, what's your Little League team doing? What's that? You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sorry about it. Our team's in the state tournament. You know, what's your team doing? <laughs> yeah. No, but here, here's the thing. My yeah, colleague... Is that good? A state tournament? Does that mean we're good? I guess I. What, you know what? Man, we're we're, we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going to find out. Right. Really good. When we take on Mass well, some of those kids drive to the some of those <laughs> some of those twelve year olds drive to the field. I'm like that kid. I faced that kid in double A ball. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So to me, I I brought this up. I said when you get to twelve, and you remember the, the those days, right? You get to twelve, and you get a really good team. And you're thinking our all star team, what what's the goal? Get to Williamsport, right? Little League World Series. That's right. And you get a lot of love when you get there because those games are on ESPN now. You get T V coverage. They, they carry the whole game. My partner, Chris Honorado, does not think that those games when you get to the Little League World Series in Williamsport really should be televised. Don't want it anywhere near coverage. my T V. Don't want it anywhere near it. Nope. Well, I I I think I disagree with that. I think I disagree with that. A lot, I think that a lot of you're people talking do. about. I think you're talking about just a really special experience, and that you know, they, to get a chance to watch it. I think obviously it's very popular, and the people want to see it. I don't think it's a situation where the kids get overexposed, you know, necessarily. I think it's just a fun little deal uh, to watch little league baseball, and I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm pro watching it on TV. I think I'm, in, I think I'm for that. One of the arguments against me here this morning has been it's it's a what is it, it creates a lifetime of memories or something like that, Rod. Somebody texted you, yeah. right? It's this life changing experience. That happens regardless of it being on TV. I, I remember totally playing agreed. Little League Baseball, and I stunk in, in New Jersey, and we were nowhere near a newspaper, television, anything. But I remember you know, a bunch of games and moments within that that, has, that will stay with me forever, and I don't need to be on TV or in the media for that to happen. Yeah, no, there's no question. I mean, you can still have, obviously, phenomenal memories. We all do. I mean, my, my Hermosa Beach Little League in L.A. was awful, and I have 
great memories of going to, you know, the big deal was going to the snack shack and getting a snow cone after. I mean, that was like the big motivation. And, uh, and those things are great. I don't, no, no, I don't think that, uh, having it on TV necessarily is, is the thing that captures the memory. I mean, I think that's what's so great about little league is that, as long as you can keep the parents out of it, Little League is awesome. Oh, that's why I was nice. And you know what, Morgan? It's funny because when you said uh, you don't think it overexposes the kids, I, in, in an earlier point I made with Roger, I said it creates a monster out of the parents with this national oh, the TV. the parents are nightmares. The <laughs> parents are out of control. They're living vicariously through their kids, and it's awful. You've I mean, seen Roger manage a game. You know, <laughs> well, hopefully, I mean, ho- hopefully the parents can take a step back and see it for what it is and, and, and that these are great life lessons to be playing on a team, to be able to be playing a game that they really enjoy. And that hopefully, you know, I really do hope that the, the big payoff for these, these kids is the icy after the game. You know, it is the Otter Pop. It is the, the ice cream and, and those type memories. Because some of this stuff, you know, especially with the amateur baseball and the young travel ball teams and stuff, in my opinion, this stuff's out of control. This is absolutely out of control. And, and I, I just, I feel like it's a racket. You know, people are telling uh, hey, your kid, if they do this, uh, you know, travel ball team or thing like that, to, that they're going to have a chance to get a scholarship and they're going to have a chance. No, no. I'm just telling you right now, the answer to that is absolutely no. That's not how it works. We're tying with Morgan Ensberg, manager of the uh, Tri-City Valley Cats, on the road for the next few games and then a return to uh, Joe Bruno Stadium. Morgan, how about some thoughts on on the big league team? This This Houston Astros team has been incredible i mean i'm looking at their record right now and it is houston is 63 and 32 they're up by 15 and a half games over seattle in the west of the american league you know it's really fun to watch and it's fun to see the hard work and the loves we took you know i was here in the beginning of this deal when it was just a disaster and we had you know the younger guys altuve and springer and keiko were coming up um, and the, it was their, you know, first year and stuff in the, in the big leagues. And we took a lot of lumps and we re- completely redid our minor league uh, system, our organization, you know, how we organized it, how we taught it. And to get a payoff this quickly, you know, people forget that it's only been, you know, five years. I mean, it's only been, you know, since this whole ownership change and everything. And, and now all of a sudden we're relevant and not only are we relevant, but we have a, uh, place ourselves in a position to do well over the next decade. It's not just this, this team. And, you know, the thing that concerns me is, is potential trades that could be coming up. Uh, I just don't believe that, that, um, deadline trades work. You know, I was part of a, a deadline trade in Houston that, that did, you know, kind of work. We got Carlos Beltran and he would continue to put on the most incredible two and a half months of baseball I've ever seen out of a player yet. We still didn't get to the world series and, you know, I think there's always a lot of pressure to make these trades. And if you look at it, they don't work. You're leveraging the future for short term. And right now, I don't think we need to make a trade. You know, we, we have the best record in baseball. We have a very good chance of making the playoffs. And once you make the playoffs, you have a chance. The teams that need to make trades are the teams that are on the bubble of making the playoffs. And, and then their goal is to, to obviously get in there. But that does not guarantee uh, them getting to the World Series. Just mid-season trades, they don't work, guys. Which is what the Yankees really are now. Interesting thoughts there as Morgan Ensberg is with us on Big Board Sports 104.5 of Team ESPN Radio because the Yankees just made a big trade with the White Sox. It really strengthens their bullpen. And we actually get a local kid, Morgan, uh, from Shaker. And uh, this Tommy Canely uh, will be uh, w- with the Yankees now. Uh, but the, the trade the deadline... Bison, by the, tr- by the way, the Bison? You got that, yeah, man. The Blue very Bison. very good. Where did that come yeah, from? What do you think about that, boys? How did you pull that one off? Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I associate, I've heard about Shaker, and I associate um, people with numbers, and I associate high schools with um, mascots. So somebody was telling me that, you know, we have uh, a, a local kid that just got in that trade. I heard it last night, and I said, well, what, what, uh, what's, the, what's the mascot? And they said, the Bisons. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> Shaker Bisons are just doing it. Hey, we, hey, hey. Making Yankees. Morgan, we got we got two. We got we got Canley, and then Jeff Hoffman is in the starting rotation. He's Shaker too uh, for the Colorado Rockies. So we got two Shaker grads getting it done. That's amazing, boys! Like that you have two guys in the same high school 
that get to the big leagues. That's uncommon, period. I mean, we don't have that. You know, and I grew up in L.A., for goodness sake. Yeah. And that's very rare, period, that, that you have two guys out of one high school. I mean, that's something really special. That's awesome for the, for the area. Hey, Morgan, you said you associate guys or players with numbers a lot of times, too. Do you remember, <clears throat> um, if I said to you, Yankees number 21, who do you think of? Paul O'Neill. Okay, so the Yankees haven't retired that number yet, but nobody is wearing it, and I don't believe anybody's worn it since uh, O'Neill wore it. But Todd Frazier says he'd like number 21. Do you think, Do you, you, you played the game, number 14, I remember. Um, do you have a strong association with a number where, like, Frazier shouldn't get it even though O'Neill hasn't had it officially retired? I mean, here we go with opinions and, like, who am I? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, who cares what I think and stuff like that. I So when I was with the Yankees, in spring training, they gave me the number 21. And I was like, oh, Lordy. <laughs> and uh, I remember asking, like, you know, because, uh, like, three-quarters of the way in, I said, can I change this number, please? And uh, they said, yeah. I'm like, because I don't want to touch this number. Mm. And it, it's not a superstition. It's a respect thing. It had nothing. To, I'm, I'm not superstitious at all. It, you know, it was just like, dude, I'm not going to wear, you know, number 21 uh, for the Yankees, for goodness sake. So I, that was just me. You know, if, if, if Todd feels like it, it's that important for him to go ahead and ask, you know, he can do that. I just I know that for me in my situation, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. And, and I would, do you think Paul O'Neill wants Todd Frazier to wear 21? Well, it's an impossible question because O'Neill's going to say yes. You know, it's one of these things like, what is, what, I mean, there's, when, if you do a decision tree, he's going to absolutely say yes because you can't say no. You know what I'm saying? Like, it comes out that O'Neill says, no, you can't wear 21. Right. That's going to be a media nightmare. So he'll have to say yes. So it's not even really a, a question. And the fact that it was done more in the public kind of puts even a, a worse spin sort of on it. Right. The Yankees- I mean, it was innocent. It was innocent. Yeah. I mean, Todd's a good guy, and it was innocent. But, I mean, it's just like, it's a guaranteed yes, he's going to wear 21. The Yankees need to make that decision, not Paul O'Neill, right? I mean, the Yankees need to say, listen, we're just not going to Yeah, I mean, this needs to go way above yeah. the players. We got to get Morgan in studio, yeah, man. No, I love yeah, having we, you we, on. We, 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 when you get just back into town, we I'm need to... I'm just never call. home. I'm just <laughs> never home when we have these things. I can come there. I'll get a, I'll get a gallon and a half of Starbucks. <laughs> we'll just go all hopped up on Starbucks and talk shop. Yeah, well, that's well, that's it. I mean, we get the Valley Cat stuff going, and then and then and then beyond with you. So big time. Uh, yeah, we'll we, we will carve out some time when you can actually have a day off. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do the show in studio, and when the show is over, we will go play a round of golf. How's that sound? Oh, look out! Now you're talking about a whole day, buddy. Look <laughs> yeah. at us. So we're, we're, you, we're, we're having field trips. You you send me a text when you have that day lined up, and we'll make it happen. Okay. Awesome. I I think it sounds like a great idea. I'm right, Morgan. Good luck Thanks, with Skipper. the road trip. Appreciate a few minutes as always. All right, boys. Have a good weekend. Take care. You, you too. Man.